the second video in the Praxis 2 probability series for the 0061 test. Here they're saying if one of 10 remote controls in a box is defective, oh, only one of the of 10 remote controls in a box is defective. So this is not a general statement, right? They're saying specifically you have a box of remote controls and inside there are, there are 10 things, right? There are 10 things inside this box and there are remote controls. And three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'll highlight it in red. Our tenth, and in this case, our tenth controller is defective. The remote controls are tested one at a time. So we're going to randomly grab remote controls and pull them out and test it. If the first three remote controls are tested, so we're going to pull three of them out and they're not defective. So we're pulling three of the non-defective ones out. What is the probability that the fourth remote control tested is defective? Well, we're taking these remote controls away and we're not replacing them, I assume. And the, the way that they are phrasing this problem, it sounds like we're not replacing them. They don't, re they don't mention that. So what's left there are seven remotes. And when we analyze this probability, we, we can change it and say, well, now there's a one in seven chance that a remote is defective because, well, there's seven remotes left, right? And one of them is defective. So it's one out of seven, which is choice C. Initially, I was inclined, I suppose, to, to pick B, right? My thinking was that, well, it doesn't matter how many remotes you take out, there's still one out of the 10 that are defective, which is true, except that you know that in the box, uh, that out of the seven left, one of them is defected, right? One of them is, no, is defective, not defected. So out of those seven left, one of them is defective, so it has to be a one in seven chance. Because you know what you've taken out. This, these are all okay, right? So you, because you know that, and because you're not putting them back, you know there's a one in seven chance that the remote that's in there is defective. If you didn't know what these were, and you're taking them out, that would change the situation. Right, because one out of ten of them is still defective. We don't know where it is, but we know what they are are okay. And in another example, they give us this problem. I actually don't like this problem because I think the wording is a little misleading. But let's let's get let's cut through it. A meteorologist predicts that there is a forty percent chance of a thunderstorm. So the the chance there is a thunderstorm t equals forty percent. And the and there's a ten percent chance that a sun thunderstorm will produce hail. So there's a the probability that that there's that there's hail given, right? Given t is ten percent. What is the probability that if a thunderstorm occurs, it will produce hail? <clears throat> well, and th and this is why I don't like it because this the way they're f they're phrasing this, it sounds like the answer is going to be ten percent, but it's not, right? It just sounds like the probability that you already know it's thunder that there's a thunderstorm that there's going to be hail, right? So that's it. Sounds like the way they're asking this question, right? It sounds like they're asking for this probability, but really what they're saying is, what is the probability that it's going to thunderstorm and, right, and the probability that it's going to hail, given that there's a, th a thunderstorm, right? These two independent events, because the hail the thunder thunders the hail given the thunderstorm, because I guess we we're saying it's only going to hail if it's, there's a thunderstorm, and the probability of a thunderstorm are independent, right? So, and when we find independent events, and that keyword is end right there, we multiply our percents. So we're going to multiply forty percent times ten percent, and um, what happens there is we get four out of a hundred, or four percent which is choice A and the answer I chose for this problem. In this problem, um, it just this is a, a problem about smokers, non-smokers, and if they're having cancer or not, right? And it says here that the data in the table above, in the table it shows that the, the diagnosis of 200 subjects consisting of smokers and non-smokers who are tested for lung cancer in a certain clinic. It says if one of the 200 subjects tested is random, excuse me, randomly selected, what is the probability 
that the subject was positively diagnosed as having lung cancer given, that's the key word, that the subject is a smoker. So, and this is a little misleading the way they, they phrase it. First, they say, if one of the 200 subjects tested is randomly selected, which makes you think that the, the total the total area or the total number of people you're looking at is all 200. You're not. You're, you're, they're saying later in it that it's given that the subject is a smoker. So, so if they're a smoker, right, this line right here, you know they're a smoker. So how many people is that? Well, there are 30 smokers. Right, and we know that. So really, we're looking at the cases where there are smokers. And given that, that you have a smoker, what is the probability that the subject was positively diagnosed as having lung cancer? Well, 25 out of 30. All right, so there's 25 um, positive diagnosed smokers out of the total number of smokers, which is 25 out of 30, or 5 out of 6, are answer D. What are these other probabilities? Well, let's see. One, one fifth, where is that coming from? I think that's coming from if you assume the total number, let's see, there are 200 smokers and 25 of them were smokers diagnosed positive. If we reduce that, we get one eighth. Right? So, yeah, that's right. So they, they didn't go for that one. Maybe perhaps what they're doing is, um, we'll put it this way. Well, 25 out of 50 25 out of 40, let's, let's write that one down, 25 out of 40, I always have to figure out what, why the other choices are there. This is, you know that the diagnosis is positive, what is the chance they're a smoker? Well, 25 out of 40, reduce that, it's 5 eighths. So that's, that's this one right here. That's if you know that they're positive prognosis and there are 40 of them, All right? that's the total, 25 of them are smokers. We took care of that one. That, that's not what we want. One sixth and one fifth. Well, there's 40 positive diagnoses. Diagnoses? I'm not sure how to say that. Out of 200. That's equal to one fifth. So that, what is that? Well, that's out of all the people. What's the, what is the probability that the diagnosis is positive? Well, it's 40 out of 200. And then... <clears throat> One sixth. Where's that coming from? That's a really small number. Maybe um, what's that? Maybe it's coming from this. Well, five. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't even realize that. If our if our answer is five sixth, right? One sixth is the complement of that. So that's that's just saying that's this this number out of the total, right? So given that we know your subject is a smoker. They have a one sixth of a chance in this group, very small chance that the diagnosis is negative. That's where this one's coming from. So we don't want that one either. We want, given that they are a smoker, what's the prognosis that they're positive? It's five sixths, essentially pretty close to being guaranteed. All right, hope that helped.